Yes, we're live. Hello, everyone. It's been a week or two. I've been out, out and about, traveling for vacation, but I'm back. Hopefully you're doing well. I'll just adjust the camera real quick. Sorry. <laughs> Everything is disheveled. I spent the last hour cleaning my brushes because when I came back, they were all rock solid after a week of just sitting on my table. Uh, I'm only going to do probably one painting today. And I just did one to practice because I haven't painted literally all week. I'm just double checking to make sure the stream's up. And it looks like it is. So we can go ahead and get started. I'll, I'll run through the colors as usual. Um, and I'm just going to paint a picture from a photo I took while I was out and about. It's a, a scene from a park. Uh, they have a little, they had a little meadow and a nice big tree. So it should be a pretty simple, simple painting, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully it's not too crazy. So colors we're using today are regular, regular oil paints. I didn't have enough time to clean those other, the rock solid brushes that were sitting out. Those were the water mixable ones. So I'm using my old uh, regular oil brushes today with Blue Ridge oil paints. So we have raw umber, burnt sienna, emerald green, Ivory black. This is thalo blue to the red shade. Lizard and crimson, titanium white, Hansa yellow, Indian yellow, yellow ochre, and naphthol red. Hey, brother man. Hope you had a great Father's Day. Hey, Billy. It has been a while. I, I was just uh, talking. That I, was, I was on vacation all last week, so um, and I missed the one before that. So it's been a it's been a good while. But I'm back. Hopefully, you're doing well too. All right, let's get uh, let's get started here. So this one doesn't have much of a sky; it's mostly trees. Um, just a little, most of it's wildflowers and a big tree. So that's that's this painting that we're gonna do today. All right, let's just let's just throw in some blue. This is just the background blue. There's gonna be a big tree here in the front. The back's gonna have some trees, and you can barely see the sky. You can just see a little bit of it up here. So I'll put this in first with the little X strokes. And this isn't too important because again, it's gonna get pretty much all covered up. I don't imagine any of this still showing unless there's just a tiny bit that's still showing at the end. So that's really all we need for the sky. And this is a very simple one, very simple thing. If you haven't painted before, hopefully you can try this one and have immediate success wiping the brush out on a shop towel so now that's our that's our sky I guess we could add a little cloud maybe a little cloud will stick out in the background and for that I'm going to use I'm actually going to use a filbert brush which I don't normally do but it's going to get covered up anyway so I might as well practice let's just throw in maybe a little puppy cloud right here that's a good spot and this is just little little circular motions here blend out the bottom, the little circles up, pull them around, and then blend out the bottoms. I'm just doing circles here, and this tree is going to be pretty much over this, so maybe only this top part will be all it shows here. That's all I wanted to do there. All right, we got Miko saying stuff in the uh, chat over there, <laughs> over on Twitch. That's interesting. Hi, Miko. All right. Now we've got that. Let's add in. We're gonna move up a little bit. We're gonna do some raw umber, some sienna, maybe some emerald green. These are gonna be our the background to our tree line. There's a big tree line in the back of this picture. So if we go back. Let's go here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's start here. And maybe we'll have it go over there. So now that I've bounded the trees there, we can I'll just tap in the rest of them here. As I go across, they'll get lighter because I pick up more of the liquid white. I've already put, I should have said that up front, I put magic white there on the on before I started the stream. So there's a nice little thin even coat of white paint already on there. Something like that. 
just need shapes here. I need shapes of trees. Because they're pretty far away in this picture. Like maybe there's one here. And he comes down out in front. Maybe we'll add another one. Maybe there's one in front of that, that one back there. Just whatever. Whatever we want here. It doesn't really matter. We're just here to practice and have fun. Enjoy the day. Might not be able to see that one too well. And then we'll add one right here. And again, I'm just putting in the dark colors here. And wherever I'm putting these dark colors, I'm actually going to highlight those instead of the instead of the light ones. So that'll make it a really nice highlight when you highlight on a dark. If you highlight on a light, you can't see it, so it's not as effective. Which is all obvious stuff, I think. Just some simple tips that I picked up watching Bob Ross and Bill Alexander. Alright, now I'm just going to tap this. I'm just going to throw in a bunch of color here. Because this is all going to be green. This is where the tree is going to be in here. There's going to be wildflowers down here. So I'm just going to hammer in some green color. It'll all make sense eventually. Alright, we got that. And that was all done with the two and a half inch brush. We haven't used any other except for the filbert for the clouds. Alright, let's add in just some some subtle colors here. So this is the one inch Alexander brush. I'm gonna take this and this is Hansa yellow here. It's very thin it's not a very thick yellow, and it gets canceled out easily, which is good for background trees because we don't want we don't want these to stand out yet. They just want to we just want some color. We don't want we don't want very bright highlights on them. We just want some of this color back here. Nate, how's it going, my man? Sky Lancer, hello. It's going well. How have you been? I know I had to cancel a couple of my streams. But I'm back now. I'm a little busy, but I'm gonna lurk. That's all good. Lurking is fine. Whatever folks want to do, I'm just glad you're here, hanging out. I'm just throwing this Hansa yellow up on here. And I'm trying to push it in a little bit harder than I normally would. That gets rid of the details. Cause I don't want these to have details. These aren't the. These aren't the focal tree. The focal tree is going to be, or the tree of focus, I should say. That's a big word. The tree of focus is the one It's going to be out front. And it's really big. It's a big tree, so that this park I go to, it has a big, and the walkway, there's this big, big tree out front. It's just a massive tree. And it's got, in front of that tree, is a little wildflower patch. And I always love walking on that path end. I've never painted it before. But I always love taking pictures of it because it's just a really nice, nice big tree and nice little wildflowers. All right, we're just just throwing in these yellowish colors. I might touch just a few up on the tops of theirs. Those in the back. There we go. So now we got our tree line. Tyler Judge, what's the plan for today? So just doing. I only have time for one painting. I'm painting a, it's basically just a meadow scene with a tree out front. Nothing too, nothing too exciting. So, but hopefully you enjoy watching it. All right, so we got this little tree line here. Now I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move up a little bit. And to do that, I'm actually gonna need some more dark color here. I'm gonna need some dark before I can the highlights on so right here I'm just gonna hammer in this dark this is emerald green burnt sienna and raw umber all mixed together because this needs to be just a little bit darker so you can see it otherwise you can't see it Good enough. 
because really all I'm focused on right now is the background background highlights here so I'm gonna take a little bit of Hansa yellow and it's okay if it's green because these are far back and we're gonna make some little uh, some little grassy patches back here I want to do this with a fan brush and then I'm going to come back with the script liner and pull some of them up because there's in the background there's a lot of weeds weeds growing there's a lot of ways to do this as well if you want to if you're doing fields or meadows I always use the fan brush but you can also use um, the one inch brush if you're covering a lot of space which I probably could do here but for now, I'm just going to throw in this. There we go. This is going to mix with the dark color, too. So as we go down, it gets a little bit darker. There we go. I think that's good enough for a little field. Now on top of this, I said I was going to use the script liner, so I'll go get that. I'm going to dip this in my, uh, this is just Alexander Magic White. So it's very, very thin white paint. I'm going to go into that yellow. Swirl it around. Spin the brush. Make sure it's kind of pointy. Otherwise you'll end up with little blobs. Which isn't hard to fix if you do have those. But now we're just going to... We're going to pull up. And I might need to grab some cad yellow here. Because I don't want this to get cancelled out. Yeah, I'm going to do that real quick. One second. Paint's right over here. This will be actual cad yellow, not Hansa yellow. I normally use Hansa yellow, but for this part, I want this to stand out. I want the little, these little highlights to stand out. And cad yellow is a very, very strong yellow. I don't use it often, but I do like it, especially for wildflowers. It's very good. All right. So I'm going to take that, mix it with this cad yellow, just thin it down. Probably should have got some, some thinner here. Painting looks amazing so far. Thanks, Guy Lancer. Just spin it around the cad yellow. Hopefully this sticks out. There we go. Does that stick out? I can kind of see it a little bit better. I'm just pulling up. I want there to be these tall reeds, I guess. I don't know what you call them. I call them reeds. Or weeds. <laughs> Either one. Alright, we're just pulling up. And these ones are in the sunlight. Because that's the sun was over here. And it was shining through back behind this big old tree. Um, and there were these weeds behind it growing up. They're really, really tall. And then out front they had a little wildflowers. This might take a while, so... If you want to step away while I'm doing this, I understand. <laughs> it's just the little details like this take a long time. Let's see, we got one. Yeah, we just gotta just gotta finish up this line in the back. And these will mostly be covered up too. I know I keep saying most of this painting is gonna get covered up, but it really is. The tree out in front of it is just gigantic. And for these, I just flick, just a little flicking motion. I don't use, uh, I don't really use my wrist at all for that. It's all my uh, fingers. There we go. This will probably be the last little patch of them. And then, there we go. That's good. Wipe this off. Don't eat the cad yellow. That'll make you sick. All right. And now in front of that, I think we're on. We're onto our big tree. So I'm gonna actually use up the rest of this Hansa yellow. I'm gonna do two things. So I'm gonna. I'm just gonna throw in a bunch of yellow right here. I'm gonna actually use up the rest of this Hansa yellow. I know it looks. It looks terrible right now. Well, that's kind of 
That's just the stage of the painting that we're in. Just tapping around with the fan brush. Trying to blend the darks into the lights. And I don't want too much detail. I can have some, but not a lot. Alright, grab pretty much the rest of that Hansa yellow here. Throw it in down there. Just putting this green in. There we go. I might actually blend some of these up. They're a little too bright. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Easy to blend stuff out. There you go. There you go, there, one there. That's good. That's good. All right, so now I'm actually going to reuse this fan brush again. I'm going to go into the emerald green. And under this tree, so we got to do a couple things first. Under the tree, we're going to need a shadow. So we're just going to throw in a shadow. I think it went out maybe to there. Because the pathway is like three dimensional out in front of the painting. That's where the pathway goes. And you're walking along it and you're looking out at this big tree and all the little wildflowers. So that's what I'm doing here. I'll throw that in there. Maybe it goes all the way over there because this thing. This thing is massive. This is a massive, massive tree here. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna mark him in first, just to remind myself where he goes. So we got that there. Let's go back over into this green. Some umber, some sienna, and now we're gonna throw in the, the uh, trunk. And sometimes I like tapping like this. Just makes the edges fuzzy. something I like doing when I'm making these big trees. Alright, so we got one there. I think it has three tr uh, three segments. It's a very, very big tree. So we got one there, we got one there. And then there's one other one. Maybe there's another one. Actually, it doesn't matter. We can make this tree however we want. We had one there. Big tree. Big, big, big tree. Roots. I'm gonna cover those up with tall grass here in a second. And then I had one more. We have one big arm. And this big arm is gonna go right through a cloud. Oh, not the cloud. Well, that's what it is. It's a very, very big tree. There we go. And this is just filler. Like all this, this is gonna, all going to get filled in with the other colors here. All right, so we got that. We're pretty much done with the fan brush now. I'm going to go into emerald green, raw umber, and some ivory black with the two and a half inch brush. And I'm going to use this to lay in basically the leaves of this. No, you're, everyone's upset that I covered up everything that I just painted, but it's okay to when you're doing this style. You can cover up whatever you want. And we can give these, uh, these leaves shape just by highlighting them. Right, there's, there's one clump right down here. At least in the photograph. There we go. So he's like a big old tree, kind of hugging your painting here. I actually don't want to cover up all that, so I'm going to leave that little patch right there. And maybe there's another little one that comes out here. Something like that. So there's our big old tree and all of its leaves. So with that, we'll now go into liquid white. And I'm gonna go into emerald green first. I want a lighter green here, but not super light, just a little bit, just to give it some some shapes here and there. And you might not be able to see this. It's going to be very, very subtle. But 
this is where I'm going to outline the clumps of the trees, just so I can tell where they are. Otherwise, I can't really see them. Got a runaway strand there. And I'll throw in some more down here. Something like that. Use up the rest of that emerald green. Go up here. There we go. Now we'll go into more, more white. And now we're going to go into this glob of Hansa yellow and cadmium yellow. It should be a light green. Hopefully a light green. Alright. Now I'm going to aim for where I had those earlier emerald green blobs that I put in. And we're just going to throw in some colors. All right, go around here, swoop it around. Got one little clump here, one little clump over here, and one right there. Oops, I picked up some Indian yellow, but that's okay. It wasn't fall when I took the painting, but nobody needs to know that. All right, we have a clump here, clump down here. Down here. I'm just kind of tapping. Kind of the same swooping motion that I used for the the old background reeds. I'm using those for these little little leaf patches. There we go. This is really just filling in the empty spaces. There we go. I think that's good enough. This is a very big tree. Alright. So now we've got that. I think we can throw in the foreground. So it's going to be more of the same, pretty much. I'll actually use the one inch brush for this. Lots of tall grass here. I'm just going to pull up. That's how I do tall grass. I just pull up with the one inch or two inch or whatever. This is cadmium yellow still. And you can go, if you do it like this, you can actually go across. You can just put one solid strand of color and then just pull that up. By doing that, you can make layers of tall grass. Pretty easy. Pretty easy, pretty simple. Just make sure you don't, uh, you leave some dark, otherwise it'll look like a weird clump. There we go. I'm gonna actually blend out some of these again. It's bothering me. <laughs> Just gotta patch it. There we go. All right, so there's our big old tree, the shade. I'm gonna pull some of that up even more. There you go. Some over there. All right. I'm gonna wipe this off. I don't know if I need this brush again, but we might. We might need it. But I know if we will for sure need the script liner again. So I'm going to wipe that one off real quick. Alright. Wipe him off. Got some cadmium yellow in my hand. That's not good. Not the worst, but not, not good. Alright. Go into liquid white again. I should use oil for this, but I think it's okay. I'm just going to start adding in the uh, foreground things. And these are just, this is also going to take a while. Because these are where the little wildflowers will grow. And they're a little bit closer, so they have a little bit more detail. And 
this is raw umber and emerald green. I'm just throwing in X strokes with the script liner. Just some shape that I'll add wildflowers to on top of it. And we also, when you're walking by, you've got to be careful because some of them have uh, bees. There's a lot of bees on them because they love these wildflowers. So you got to be a little careful. You don't get stung. Some kids don't just run up and smack the bees. <laughs> and they get stung and they start crying. That's what happens. That's what happens when you smack bees. They get upset. You could also... I know there's a million ways of doing everything when you're painting, but... You can do this with the fan brush too. I just like using the script liner because it looks more grassy. That's a word. It just takes longer. It takes longer to do it, but I like the effect more. And then once you have these tall ones in, you can throw in smaller ones with the fan brush. Just doing X's. X's and up and down, left and right, whatever. The more of them the have, you have, the less detail you need, or the less precision you need to make it look like grass. there. I'm just going to start up and down, up and down. Something like that. All over the place. Just make it look messy because that's how these, these wildflowers grow. They just grow all over. Every which way. I'll get this off one more time. Get the old fan brush. I think there's still some brown on that that we can use here. Yeah, not enough. Not enough. Close, but not, not enough. Umber, ivory black. Just smacking it in, that dark color. Can't remember. Yeah, there we go. Then I just pull up. That makes it look more, uh, gives it more dimension. And I'll come back in one more time and throw in more weeds or reeds, whatever you want to call them. Just one more time. And that should be enough. And then I can add little wildflowers and call it a day. Again, this is a short, short stream today. I just got a lot going on. I did want to stream. I didn't want to. I didn't want to go two weeks without streaming. I don't know. I feel like I haven't done anything in the week if I don't record my painting at least one time. Otherwise, just a bunch of Instagram posts. All right, there we go. I think that's. Oh, whoops! That was a smudge. Easy to fix smudges though. You just pull the paint up different directions and it goes away. Easy fix, easy fix. Fender 31, great to see you doing another painting episode tonight. Great to see you, Fender. Always glad to see folks. Multiple streams. All right, we're just gonna throw in these. I don't know if I wanna make a really tall flower or just, we'll just make some of these smaller ones. We'll see, we'll see how we feel once we do a couple of them. All right, so we've got the little grass there. And now I'm just going to start adding in some more liquid white. Again, if I had my clear oil out, I would be using that. But we just go into these bright colors. So Indian yellow, yellow ochre, all those, all those colors. And we're just going to add in some nice little flowers here, here and there. And they can go, they might be a little hard to see against the green. At least for me, I don't know. You can always brighten them up with some white. 
that's always one way to brighten up a color. I actually like that a little bit more. I don't know how real that is looking, but I like that color for a flower. They got lilies, they got black eyed Susans, they got these like nice little blue wildflowers out there. All over. All over these little flowers grow. I'm just going to throw them in everywhere. Because that's how this field is. It's all wildflowers all the way out to the, out to the tree line. But it's very nice, very nice walk if you have a chance. Get out there, it's called Ann Springs Greenway. Ann Springs Closed Greenway. Hey Nate, do you have Facebook? If we can talk out there on art and you can see my acrylic oils. I do have one, it's linked in my uh, my link tree. There should be a Facebook link on there. You can message me on there or on Instagram or Twitter, pretty much any of those. I'm always, always available pretty much. I'm gonna use some yellow here. Might need some more thinner because it's not sticking too good. I'm just kind of poking in with the script liner here. That's all I'm doing. Makes it look like a flower. And you will have to wipe it off a few times if you're doing it like this. Just pull, picking some yellow and I actually mixed some white into this. I'm not sure why. Maybe just to make it brighter. But it might stand out a little bit. Just throwing in. This is a script liner heavy painting. Lots and lots of script liners and stuff here. I don't think I've ever tried to do tall grass with the or, or wildflowers with the fan brush. It might work. It might work. It might be a little faster. If you use the corner or something it might work. But we'll see. Smudges smudges down here. Go into the ochre, yellow ochre, and some white. Maybe that'll look nice. Could add some red, because there are some red flowers, I believe, out there. This is, that's a composition, right? I'm not sure. I'll be honest, I don't know what composition means. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not too familiar with terms, art terms. Alright, here we go. That's a nice color, ochre. Yellow ochre. I can't remember if I mixed the yellow in. I think I had some yellow left on the brush. But there's going to be lots and lots of different colors here. There are lots and lots of little flowers out in this in this field. They just grow all over it. And they have a sign up. You can't pick them or anything because some of them are, uh, I think, endangered wildflowers. I don't want people picking them. Just tapping in. Tapping in with the script liner. And there are some blue flowers, so I might grab I'm gonna grab some white here. Actually that was a lot of white. <laughs> that was not a little bit of white here. Okay, I have some blue. That's Prussian blue. Let's see if this sticks at all. I don't know if it will. Can't do too many of these because we're on green. So we'll just get more green. But maybe some will stick out. There we go. At least we got a few. We got a few in before it turned green. Amazing work. Thanks, Udeco. Some of those flowers could be lightning bugs. Oh yeah, you could do some lightning bugs. They'd fly all over. At nighttime, yeah, lightning bugs out in this park. They love hanging out in these flowers because there's lots of mosquitoes on them. Lots and lots of mosquitoes. All right, maybe we'll make this a little lighter. And I could add some crimson there. I think that makes purple. I don't know. I don't know. We're just tapping in. I don't know if I want to cover all this up or just some of it. But here and there I'm just throwing in 
different colors. Different colors. Go into the orange. Or this, that's Indian yellow. Maybe some ochre. Throw that in down here. Some there, some there. Some over here, maybe up there. Over here, over there, over there. Lots and lots of that. Nice colors. And they have lots of butterflies too. Lots of butterflies like hanging out on these flowers. Use some more white. Meaning you created this paint. Yes, yes. This is a this is one that I just started on. Ooh, I wonder if we can make a pink flower. There are some pink flowers, I believe, in that in that field. Let's do that. Just a few of those. Here and there. Just tapping. Tapping random places. You just poke in with the script liner. It looks like a flower, pretty much. You can get really detailed and do like different strokes and get a, a smaller brush, but I just do it. I just tap in. I don't I don't spend too much time on outside of tapping a few times on a flower. I'm just going to make sure I get the tops of all these uh, tall grass that I put in. I don't want any of those sticking up. That might look a little weird. But sometimes you do have grass that sticks up, so maybe I'll leave a couple. Yeah, I didn't stream earlier. I did a Kevin Hill painting. He did a new mountain one that I wanted to paint along with, but I didn't stream it because those. Those ones tend to not go so well for me. Uh, it's just too much. Uh, he has, unless you get the paid thing, a paid video, he doesn't tell what colors he's using usually. So for me, that, that's a very that's a big struggle. So I didn't stream that one, but it'll be on Instagram later if folks want to see that one. And if you want to paint that one too, I'd recommend it because it's not. It's one of the easier ones of his. Some of his are really hard, but that one wasn't too bad. It's like a mountain, winter mountain scene. It's pretty good. All right, let's just keep throwing these. I'm just gonna keep throwing these flowers in until I'm out of paint, <laughs> or until I'm out of space. I just want as much color, because this is really what that that path looks like. like. It's hard to explain it, other than if you look at that at the paint or picture. <laughs> If you go there and take a picture, and you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. As soon as you walk in, there's just this big field, and it's got all kinds of wildflowers all over it. Just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. Oh, it's wonderful. One of my favorite places. All right, let's see what we got left. We got some yellow here. Let's add some yellow. We got some sunflowers there, so I'll add some white to that. Just brighten it up just a little bit. Spin the brush around, make sure it's a sharp edge here. We'll add these. We're running out of space, but that's okay. Running out of space on this is a good thing. So that means you're putting a lot of details. And I'll grab some of that orange again. Ochre. Ochre Indian yellow. Do we want any red flowers in here? I feel like we should. Throw in some red flowers. We could throw in whatever we want, really. Maybe just a little bit. This is naphthol red here. Very, very, very strong. Very, very strong. <laughs> so I gotta be careful with it. See how much that sticks out? I don't wanna put too much of that in there. Just here and there. So it'll cover up whatever is under it. There we go. Mm -hmm. Go into the orange. I just stepped back a little bit and look, looked here and it looked a little bare. So maybe we'll put one right up on that dark. A couple of them just hanging out. Maybe another one. Right here. Some there. Some there. Some there. There. Doop, doop, doop. Doop, doop. Wherever. 
This one, this is not a painting of precision. It's just whatever we want, wherever we want the flowers to go. Spin that around. Do some more here, some more there. Maybe one up here. Hmm, why not? One there, 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 and there. And then I just want one little more. The halo is blue left. Go into the white. Make a light blue. I'll throw in some more light blue. These won't be too noticeable, but they're out here. They're just hanging out. Nice little blue flowers. I don't know most of the types of flowers they got. I just they have signs for some of them up um, if they're endangered. There, maybe there, and then one more down there. And I think that's good. That's good enough for that. Uh, one last thing I wanted to do. I forgot to do it. Should have done it. Was got a highlighter. Got a highlighter tree. Put in all that work. We didn't give them any shape. But that's easy enough. You can just use the uh, fan brush. Pull down. Brush strokes really give this shape. It's not not so much the highlights as it is the brush strokes here. There we go. I'm gonna add some more in up on this this guy right here. Should have done that earlier, but wasn't really thinking. I was really just thinking about the wildflowers here. And then one more thing we can do on the bottom of this there's a patch maybe there's a patch of sunlight comes in there maybe right here not too much just a few patches and he comes down there we go that's it that's it that's the tree big old tree I don't know what type of tree it is but I just know that it's big Gotta sign it. I gotta sign the painting. And again, this is the only one I'm doing today. I got uh, just got a lot of catching up on stuff to do because I've been out all week. I went to the Napthal Red with this script liner and some thin paint. Put a little signature on here. NWJ. I didn't have time to upload the last stream. Uh, I normally break the video up, so I'll probably do that this week as well. I didn't forget about it. It's on my on my list of things to do. And the J22. And I'm also using. I don't know if folks have used this, but they have. There's this stuff called Bristle Magic. It's like a. It's supposed to be non-toxic uh, brush cleaner. It actually works really well. So I've been using that today. And I really like it. It does smell, I don't know, it says it's non-toxic, but it smells kind of like gasoline. So maybe it's not. I don't know. You'd have to ask them. But, all right, let's see. Here's the painting. Let's see if I can aim it right. Uh, a little back. Oh, there we go. That's the painting. Thanks, everybody, for joining. If you, uh, if you have any questions, reach out to me on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, any, any way you want, really. I'll be around. Um, but yeah, I hope everybody has a good week. And I should be around next week, all things considered. Or hopefully I got everything planned out. I've got paint all over me. And yeah, thanks for watching. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye, everyone.